Here we're looking at a Clarkson model vertical steam engine recently constructed. The engine has a one inch bore and a one and a half inch stroke and the flywheel is about four inches in diameter. I must say that the flywheel is a little light for the type of engine that it is and I'm sure the engine would benefit from a heavier flywheel um, and certainly improve its performance at low speed. However, that said, the engine does run well and uh, I'll be showing you that shortly. Whilst constructing this engine, I took the opportunity to uh, build in some Stevenson valve gear to provide a reversing motion for the engine. And I'll show you that now. <clears throat> First thing to notice is the steam chest and you can see that I've fitted a perspex cover to the steam chest to enable the um, slide valve to be seen within the chest whilst it's operating. The Stevenson's valve gear itself is driven by two eccentrics down there on the crankshaft. One eccentric and rod drives the engine in a forward direction and the other one drives the engine in a reverse direction. At the top here the two rods are linked together with this piece of metal which is known as a Stevenson's link and this allows a smooth transition from forward to reverse. It also has the benefit of being able to adjust the stroke of the valve and thereby improve the efficiency of the engine in light running conditions and this was found to be particularly beneficial when fitted to some of the early steam locomotives when once the train was moving and at speed the um, valve gear could be notched up in other words the, the travel of the valve reduced to uh, restrict the amount of steam that was being fed into the cylinders uh, thus improving efficiency and also assisting the boiler to cope with the demands made upon it. So I'll just now turn the flywheel and you can see the movement of the valve gear as the piston goes up and down behind. Looking into the steam chest you can see the slide valve moves up and down and there's a port to the top of that valve and also a port at the lower side of the valve. The upper port controls the steam to the top side of the piston and the bottom valve controls the steam to the underside of the piston thus making the engine double acting in other words the piston is pushed by steam alternately from top and bottom. Between those two ports in the steam chest is a central port which is the exhaust port and that feeds out to this pipe here and away to the exhaust pipe or atmosphere. So the underside of the slide valve is recessed to form a transfer passage from either the top or bottom part to the central exhaust part. <coughs> the movement of the Stevenson's link is achieved by pushing on this handle here and as you can see we're transferring from one side to the other. and the notching up is made by simply moving that by degrees across to the desired position. When in the central position uh, the engine will not move because there's no travel on the valve at all. So I'll uh, now run the engine in a forward motion that's with the flywheel going clockwise and we can see it in operation. There we are, the <coughs> engine's running forward and the valve gear's in full gear to use railway parlance and the engine's ticking away there quite nice and slowly. If we turn the air off, push the link across, 
we can then start the engine in a reverse direction. Where the engine's running in reverse. Moving back to forward motion again. I'll now notch up the valve gear and you'll notice the difference in the sound of the exhaust as the amount of air is restricted to the engine. So pushing this lever down here See the engine's going quieter, I'm running slightly lumpily because I've got it set to a slow speed. But you can see there that the engine actually consuming less air than it would otherwise in full gear. And you can see that and hear the difference as I put this back to a full gear position and listen to the change in the exhaust note. There we are, back in full gear, the engine's running a lot freer. And just watch the slide valve there, inside the steam chest going up and down. Down there there's the action of the eccentrics. Turn the engine round. And we can have a look at the crankshaft from the other side. And the crank web going round. The eccentric seam from the other side. And the cross head going up and down in the trunk guide there. Now the engine seems to be running quite nicely there and uh, we'll just check and see what speed it's giving us. It's about 220 revs per minute. I don't know whether we can get that any slower. Let's try. The engine of course is just newly built and still fairly tight so as time goes on it will probably run a bit freer and slower as it beds itself in. It sounds to be going a little bit slower there. And it's 211 now. Not that much slower. And try again a little bit more. The trouble with running small engines like this off a compressor, and I'm currently using a, an airbrush compressor which is quite small, is that depending on how much you, air you're drawing from the compressor, it affects the uh, speed of the engine because the uh, output varies. But the one advantage of them is that they're fairly quiet. They don't interfere too much with the recording. So we're down to just over 200 RPM there. Which is not bad really for a small engine like this. I don't think I'm getting going much slower. Yeah, probably about as slow as it would go. Um, the engine would benefit from a larger flywheel, there's no doubt about that. Um, it would make it run smoother and possibly slower. But uh, it is an original flywheel, this one that's fitted, and uh, you know the engine's ticking away uh, not too badly. So I'm quite happy with that.